Welcome to Lafayette Online Academy. This orientation is for middle and high school students. Please note that the orientations are grade specific, so there is a different orientation for students in elementary school. At the end of this presentation, you will click the link provided in the email to sign the acknowledgement form. This must be completed for students to begin their courses. Further instructions will be provided at the end of the video. Communication Communication with parents and students is essential to a successful online education. Important information such as student progress, concerns, observations, and important events will be communicated through email. Parents agree to regularly check their email at least twice weekly and create an Edgenuity Family Portal account for students in grades 6 through 12 and or a Pathblazer Family Portal account for students in grades 3 through 5 so they are aware of communication and attendance regarding their child. A valid parent email address is required for enrollment. AOL email is excluded from being accepted. Lafayette Parish does not accept incoming messages from AOL. Curriculum. For middle and high school, we use Edgenuity and a Google Classroom, which will be set up by the facilitator. The website link to Edgenuity, login information, as well as instructions, were included in the Welcome to LOA email. The Family Portal allows parents to access current information about a student's progress and performance. Access instructions were included in the Welcome to LOA email. A computer with internet access, as well as a location and time for the student to work, are necessary for online education. Orientation Requirements The orientation period is from September 8th to September 18th. To remain enrolled in Lafayette Online Academy, students and parents must successfully meet the orientation requirements listed below. Students must complete all criteria by 10 a.m. September 18th to continue in the program. Failure to complete onboarding and orientation processes may result in the student being returned to the school site for phase learning. The student must be no greater then 5% behind target progress in all assigned courses at the end of the orientation period. The student and parent must have responded in a timely fashion to their facilitator. The parent must have created an Edgenuity Family Portal account for students in grades 6 through 12 or a Pathblazer Family Portal account in, for students in grades 3 through 5 using a parent email address associated with the student Edgenuity account. The student must have a passing actual and overall grade of greater than 67 percent in each course at the end of the orientation period. The parent must have successfully logged into JCampus Parent Portal for each child to verify the account and provide a valid email address. No student or parent activity during the onboarding and orientation week will result in an automatic release back to the base school site per compulsory attendance. Performance Goals At the conclusion of each nine-week grading period, course progress and academic performance will be evaluated. All online students are required to meet performance goals throughout their enrollment. Progression Goal For middle school, the students must gain at least 25% progress in each assigned course for each nine-week grading period. For high school, students must gain at least 50% progress in each assigned course for each nine-week grading period. Academic Goals Students must have a passing grade greater than or equal to a 67% overall grade at the end of each nine-week grading period. A student's overall and actual grades will be identical if the student is on track in the course. Students who do not meet the 25 percent for middle school and 50 percent for high school course progress goal in any course will be released from the program through an SBLC meeting. Released students must resume attending their base school or seek an alternate educational environment. 
Compulsory Attendance Bulletin 741, Distance Education, and the Lafayette Parish School System Pupil Progression Plan govern Lafayette Online Academy attendance and reporting requirements. For that reason, students must abide by policy established in the LPSS Student Handbook, and our students must meet district attendance requirements. Establishing a daily work schedule is critical to the successful completion of your online courses. Students should work each day for the same duration as they would in a traditional school day, at least five hours a day with associated activities completed. Establishing a daily work schedule is critical to the successful completion of your online courses. High school students should complete a minimum of two quizzes in each course, which equates to 10 to 12 activities each day. This means completing a minimum of 10 quizzes or 100 to 120 activities each week in each course. Middle school students should complete a minimum of one quiz in each course or five to six activities each day. This means completing a minimum of five quizzes or 25 to 30 activities each week in each course. Daily work schedule. Students should work for the same duration each day as they would during a traditional school day, at least five hours a day with associated activities completed. Edgenuity provides each student a customized course map per course, which provides the due date for each assignment. Students can view the day's agenda and see the future due dates of all assignments. Students are notified about being behind and the number of activities required to catch up. Students can see their progress on their student dashboard. Students must also participate in all facilitator Zoom sessions. Edgenuity System Progress Reports Parents will receive a progress report through email on a weekly basis. Understanding Progress Reports The Grades Students will see their actual grade. This is the overall grade adjusted for progress if a student is behind. It shows the impact of pacing on the student's course grade. Overall grade, the grade your child has earned thus far in the course based on all activities and assessments he or she has completed. Progress, the current progress is the percentage of the assignments completed by the student. The target is the percentage of the assignments that should be completed by the student. Edgenuity gives visual clues with colors on the student dashboard. Blue progress indicates your child is on track to complete the course by the deadline. Green progress indicates your child is ahead in the course. And red progress indicates your child is falling behind in the course and will not meet the deadline. The assessment flowchart. This is the graphic form that the teacher's actions take. Students must score a 70% or higher to automatically advance to the next activity in quizzes and unit tests. You'll notice the student works through the lesson and they should be taking notes and using the course map to study before taking the quiz. That's quiz attempt number one. If the student earns a 70 or above, the student passes and moves on to the next lesson automatically. The student can return to the quiz, if they choose to do so, to take the second attempt without a teacher intervention. Again, if the student makes a 70 or higher, the student passes and is moved on to the next lesson. If the student has failed both the first and the second attempt, however, in order to move forward, they need a third attempt which requires teacher intervention. In that situation, the teacher will review the quiz and objectives, reassign any needed activities, and will grant a third quiz attempt, which will be waiting for the student when they are done reviewing the reset activities. After the third attempt, if the student makes a 70 or higher, the student will move on to the next activity automatically. If the student fails the quiz, the teacher must award the highest of the three grades for the student to move forward. If a student has earned a 70 or higher on the first two attempts, but would like the opportunity to earn a higher grade, 
They will need to contact the teacher because the teacher will have no way of knowing this. The teacher can then give them the opportunity for the third attempt. For topic tests and cumulative exams, the students have a maximum attempt of two. The student will use the course map and the notes to review. The teacher assesses the student readiness for tests before allowing access to the test. If the student has a passing grade on the review, the teacher will open up or unlock the first attempt on the test. If the student scores a 70% or higher, the student passes and will move forward automatically to the next lesson. If, however, the student fails, teacher intervention is required. When the teacher deems that it is appropriate to open the next attempt, they will open the second attempt. If the student fails again, the teacher will need to intervene and award the highest of the two attempts. If the student passes with a 70 or above, they will be moved on automatically to the next lesson. Unit Test Review Information Test review activities provide students with valuable practice and feedback regarding their learning. All students are required to pass with a 67% or above on the unit test review activity before a teacher will allow them to take the unit test. Students must take the test within two days of completing the unit test review. Warning! Avoid looking up questions on the Internet. High scores on the review by looking up the answers will give false positive feedback for teachers. A high score on the review should equal a passing score on the test. Proctoring information. All coursework will be performed from home. While working from home, ongoing communication between the facilitator and the student is maintained through email, the primary method, video conferencing, and phone. The unit test schedule. The unit tests are based on the student's progress and the individual course design. Students can expect to have a test in each course at least once a week. Proctored tests. All unit tests and cumulative exams must be proctored virtually by an approved Lafayette Parish School System facilitator or teacher. Please contact your base school's online facilitator when you are ready to test. Unit tests and exams only. All tests and exams must be taken within two days of completing the unit test review. A student's second attempt on a failed assessment must be completed within two days of the initial attempt. All unit tests and cumulative exams must be proctored virtually by an approved Lafayette Parish school system facilitator or teacher. Please contact your base school's online facilitator when you are ready to test. Helpful information for unit test and cumulative exams. Once you view a question on a unit test or an exam, you must answer it in the same session. If you save and exit, any questions you viewed but did not answer will be counted as incorrect when you log back in to resume the test or exam. Therefore, click only on questions you intend to answer in that particular session. This feature does not apply to quizzes. Before taking a midterm cumulative exam and final unit test or cumulative exam. Previous activities. Once you begin the first attempt on a midterm cumulative exam or a final unit test or cumulative exam, you may not return to previous activities in the course. If a course has a midterm cumulative exam, students must have taken all quiz retakes and recompleted any eligible assignments which precede the exam. In courses with only a final exam or a final unit test, students must have taken all quiz retakes and recompleted any eligible assignments which precede the final assessment in the course. Course completion. The course is complete when the final unit test or cumulative exam, the final exam, is submitted. Taking notes, the key to your success. Students who take notes and use them are much more likely to succeed. It is important to view all instructional videos and take notes during the video lectures and direct instructions. You have two note-taking options. The first is eNotes. Each course in Edgenuity 
has a place for taking notes. It will keep your notes organized and easily available during assessments. Notebook. This is paper and pen. If you choose to use a notebook, make sure that you stay organized and your notes are individualized by subject. The notebook is required for math courses. Students can and should use notes on quizzes, tests, and cumulative exams. Taking notes enables students to take ownership of the learning process. Teacher intervention needs. In order for a teacher to determine what to review and allow them to reteach, notes help the teachers identify the student's deficits. Student support. How do you get help with your coursework? Ongoing communication between the facilitator and the student is maintained through email, the primary method, video conferencing, and phone. At-home learning expectations. The student should not be using a mobile phone while working in Ingenuity. No Googling questions on assessments. The student should watch and listen to all instructional videos. Work according to your established schedule and routine. Work for the duration of a normal school day, at least five hours, including the associated course activities. Log off and or pause instruction before leaving your computer. Successful course completion. Students must successfully complete their online courses by the course completion date indicated in the courseware, the target date. A course is only considered complete when the courseware indicates a 100% student progress rate and all assignments, projects, and essays have been completed, submitted, and graded by a teacher. Online students will be enrolled in a block schedule and will have a maximum of four active courses at any time. High school students in grades 9 through 12 will be given five months to complete their courses or a semester, for example, August to December and January through May. Middle school students, grades 6 through 8, will be given the entire school year or 10 months to complete their courses, for example, August to May. Earning credit. To earn a Carnegie unit, students must successfully complete their online course, as described above, with a passing grade of equal to or greater than 67%. Grading is based on the approved LPSS grading scale. Academic Progress To remain enrolled in Lafayette Online Academy, all students must meet the above-mentioned performance goals. High school students must earn eight Carnegie units within an academic year. Middle and elementary school students must successfully complete all of their courses within an academic school year. Failure to successfully complete all courses in an academic school year will result in the student being released from the online program. Released students must resume attending their base school. Planned inactivity. Parents must notify their child's online facilitator by email if a student cannot work on their courses due to a medical procedure, illness, vacation, or an unexpected event. Inactivity can be approved provided that student progress is satisfactory in all courses. Any missed work during that time must be made up in a reasonably prompt fashion. Extended periods of inactivity coupled with unsatisfactory student progress, will be considered grounds for release from the online program. Standardized Assessments By choosing to enter the Lafayette Online Academy program, parents agree to have their child participate in the state and national standardized assessments listed below. For grade levels 3 through 8, the assessment is the LEAP 2025. For grades 9 through 12, the LEAP 2025. 11th graders must take the ACT and 12th graders take work keys as applicable. Parents will receive a complete testing schedule prior to testing from their child's base school. Athletes. Students who will be going to college and plan to play sports should pause this video at this moment and read through the NCAA and LHSAA requirements. There are additional considerations on the next slide. 
This is the continuation of the NCAA requirements on the previous slide. Again, please pause this video to read through them. The LOA Academic Integrity Policy Students are prohibited from engaging in plagiarism, dishonesty, and cheating. Please see the additional details and examples in the LOA Policy and Student Handbook Acknowledgement. Any academic exercise that is not your own, for example, an essay or response containing plagiarism, will result in disciplinary action according to the Lafayette Parish School System Consequences of Behavior Policy. The process in online courses follows. The online teacher will notify the student, parent, and school counselor or administrator of the first infraction through email. The student must resubmit the assignment with their own original work within five days of notification. After five days, the student will receive a zero on the academic exercise if not submitted. If academic dishonesty is found in the resubmitted work, the online teacher will award a grade of zero. Due to the asynchronous nature of online courses, subsequent instances of plagiarism or academic dishonesty will result in a zero on the assignment. Academic dishonesty includes, but is not limited to, plagiarism, dishonesty, and cheating. Plagiarism is the use of another person's ideas, words, phrases, or paragraphs without proper citation and credit for the given source. If found, students must resubmit their own original work within five days of teacher notification. After five days, the student will receive a zero on the academic exercise if it is not submitted. If academic dishonesty is found on the resubmitted work, the online teacher will award a grade of zero. Dishonesty. Dishonesty involves logging in as another student to complete assignments, as well as allowing another student to complete your assignments. Cheating. This includes looking up answers on Google and using prohibited materials on tests. It also includes writing down assignment, quiz, or test questions, as well as taking screenshots or pictures with your phone or other device. All of those are a violation of copyright laws. Unsubmitted work. Any coursework that is unsubmitted must be completed and submitted by the student. The online teacher will notify the student, parent, and school counselor of the unsubmitted work through email. The student must submit the coursework within five days of notification. If after five days the assignment remains unsubmitted, the student will receive a zero on the academic exercise. Your online facilitator. Your child's online facilitator will be reaching out to you by the end of the onboarding and orientation period, which is the first week of school. It is important to establish a good working relationship with your facilitator. Be sure to contact your Bay School online facilitator for any assistance you may need. Visit your child's course facilitator's Google Classroom to see reminders and notices from the teacher. The LPSS Student Parent Handbook. A link to the LPSS 2020-2021 Student Handbook is found on page 3 of the accompanying Acknowledgement Form. Please see the link in the welcome email. The Acknowledgement Form includes both the LOA policies and the 2020-2021 Student Handbook policies, so it requires only one signature of the parent and student. A quick demonstration of this process follows. You must sign the acknowledgement form for each child. To do so, return to the email from which you launched this orientation video. Click on the LOA Policy and LPSS Student Handbook Acknowledgement. Click Next and review the policies. These were covered in this presentation, though some additional details may be provided. Click Next to proceed to Section 3, and click the link to review this year's Student Handbook. After you have reviewed the handbook, click Next to Section 4. Using the information provided in the welcome email, Select your child's school.
Then type your child's first and last names. Copy and paste your child's student ID number. Type your first and last names. And provide a valid email address. You will then click to select the acceptance of each policy. Then click Submit. You will then receive the confirmation of your submission. Elementary and middle school students will access their coursework through Clever using their email address, which was included in the welcome email. They will be prompted to change it the first time they log in. Please make a record of this password. It will be used each subsequent time your child logs in. Please remember that coursework will not be active until the morning school starts. Parents of high school students will receive a similar email. The instructions are identical to the elementary and middle school instructions, except for students will be logging in directly to Edgenuity. The link is provided in the email, as well as the Edgenuity username and password. The password is the student's eight-digit date of birth. Students should not change this password. Their username is not easily guessed, and we prefer their password stay within our convention so we can offer aid. Students will access Edgenuity by selecting the link. Then, students will log in using the credentials supplied in the email. The first time students log in, they will view the orientation video. This is an eight-minute video that goes over everything the student needs to know to use the courseware. Parents who had an email address on file will receive the Parent Portal activation code as well as the email address associated with the student's Edgenuity account. You'll follow the directions included in the email to create your Parent Portal account. We are so happy to have you and your family as part of our learning program. We hope this will be a successful and rewarding experience for you and your child.